Hello, my name is Michael Kilpatrick, and I'm pleased to be joining you today as part of the Smart City Council's Smart City Academy. Today, we'll be discussing alternative contracting structures, in particular, as a service contracting. Now, these can be particularly helpful as you pursue some of the many solutions available to make your city, town, or village smarter. Before I get started, I want to briefly introduce myself and Duke Energy Sustainable Solutions. Again, my name is Michael Kilpatrick. I'm the key segment manager for state and local government at Duke Energy Sustainable Solutions. And in my role, I talk to cities every day who are working to solve their sustainability, resiliency, and smart city goals. At Duke Energy Sustainable Solutions, we are at our core long-term owners and operators of energy infrastructure. Every day, we help our clients nationwide pursue their clean energy goals. Our solutions range from large off-site renewable energy to distribute generation such as energy storage or combined heat and power. And we also have experience in microgrids and in backup power, helping these cities pursue their decarbonization goals as well as meeting the resiliency challenges of today and the future. So our agenda for this module will briefly cover four main topics. So why is now the time for alternative contracting structures with cities? What's the need to pursue these alternative contracting structures? Next, we'll define what as a service contracting is. From there, we'll discuss the different applications of as a service contracting. And finally, we'll wrap up uh, what the differences are from as a service contracting to other more traditional types of procurement. So why now? Why are there new contracting structures popping up for municipalities? First, let's frame it for where cities are at this point. We believe the future of cities are going to be more sustainable, resilient, and smart. Now, these three topics have been flowed around for some time now. Some cities and leaders even have departments uh, focused on these three pillars. We have chief sustainability officers. We have chief resiliency officers. We even have chief innovation officers. And for the cities that can fund these wonderful roles, they serve a vital purpose in advancing the residents' desires to pursue a future that meets the city's needs without compromising future generations, allows them to withstand unexpected disruptions, and leverage technology to optimize the city assets. But what happens if your city, town, or village doesn't have the funding for these extraordinary roles? What if your community doesn't have the funding to pursue any sort of projects like that? Or you have the funding, but you may not have the technical resources on staff to properly operate and maintain these assets. For all these reasons and more, as a service contracting has been something that has been seen as a possible solution. It's not that as a service is brand new. Certainly ne nearly every city watching this module likely has signed a, a master services agreement at some sort. Uh, sort of time um, for municipal service, but the contracting structure is new when you start to layer in the sustainable, resilient, and smart solutions that have really popped up over the years and, and help complement some of the traditional procurement uh, structures out there. So what is as a service? Let's go uh, over what it really means. And I'm sure many of you listening to this module have already had someone pitch you as a service contracting for a variety of solutions, but let's discuss it in its most basic form. As a service contracting uh, provides the city to work with a solution provider to identify the solution. The solution provider will bring the capital, thereby owning the asset, and they will also provide the operation and maintenance for this asset. Let me provide an analogy. Think about this, when you buy a car, you make a down payment on that car likely. You pick up the monthly payments over some period of time to pay off the loan for that car. You own that car. But you're also responsible for putting gas in the car. You're responsible for changing the oil. And look, you've got to drive that car, right? Now let's consider that in the framework of as a service contracting. What if there was car as a service, right? That sounds like a fun proposition. Now, how would that work? Well, while you still pick out the car that you want, you're not putting down any down payment, 
All right, you know, coming out of pocket with cash. You simply pick up the monthly service payment uh, for that car. Now, also, you're getting a driver, right? Since you don't own the car, someone's going to be driving that car. And that driver also makes sure that that car has gas, the oil is changed, and it's running at peak performance. That sounds pretty nice, right? Like maybe we should start the car as a service model. It seems maybe a bit impractical for some of us to have a driver, but we can dream. Uh, but that's what as a service contracting is. The service provider brings the capital, they own the asset, and they also handle the operation and maintenance of the asset. And the city gets the benefit of utilizing the asset for either a fixed or a variable monthly fee. So now that we define what as a service contracting is, let's discuss some practical applications. So first we'll we'll talk about energy and I'll be honest I'm, I'm much more talking about much more comfortable excuse me talking about energy since I work for Duke Energy Sustainable Solutions. Um, so what are some of the applications when you think about energy as a service? So the first one is resiliency and this could be placing a emergency generator outside your fire station. You can procure this as a service resiliency as a service. A third party will come in and own that emergency generator. They'll handle the operation and maintenance. They'll make sure it's fueled. And the municipality gets the benefit of an understanding that that uh, emergency asset is going to be available when they need it. That generator is going to be uh, reliably um, operated and, and, and serve your need. The next thing to, uh, to look at is a microgrid. What if you want to go off the grid and balance numerous energy loads? Now you can procure that as a service. What about lighting? What if you were to replace your interior exterior lights? You can also procure that as a service. Now, electrical infrastructure. What if you had an old transformer or substation? You can still procure that as a service. And finally, EV charging. And this is going to be a hot topic in years to come. Uh, the EV charger itself, you can procure as a service. But let's also not forget about the electrical infrastructure needed behind the scenes to make sure that EV charger can be powered. You can also procure that infrastructure as a service. Now, as I mentioned earlier, as a service contracting isn't new. This is true. It's just the applications are new and how they are sold is new. Now let's look at the technology side of things for a minute. As I mentioned on the previous slide, there's lighting as a service, and this is relatively new. We've seen some cities within the United States, bigger cities, uh, pursue lighting as a service in contrast to traditional performance contracting, which we'll discuss a bit later in this module. Uh, but what if you want to put some smart city attachments on that new lighting pole that you put up? Maybe you want to put a camera or some sensors. You can also procure that as a service, and you can even add that to the contract where you procure the lights. Someone will come in and make sure that technology is up and running and performing as the city wanted. Also, uh, there's certainly a lot of data out there uh, that these smart city applications will collect. But well, wouldn't it be great to put all this data on a single platform that different stakeholders within the uh, community, within the city can use to allow the city to be more efficient? And, and look, the efficiency is gonna help them, the city meet their sustainability goals because the more efficient you are, likely the more energy, the less energy you use and thereby meeting uh, some of your sustainability goals. Well, wouldn't it be great if there was kind of the platform as a service? Well, it is possible and we're seeing folks out there in the market offer that type of solution. So again, as a service can appeal to energy, can also appeal to technology. So throughout this module, I've talked about why as a service contracting, how it works, in the different applications. Now, I'd be remiss not to close the module by considering where we've been and what are the differences between as a service contracting and more traditional procurement. So let's start with traditional procurement. And this is a tried and true way that cities have procured since the beginning of cities, right? They use the, the funds available, the tax revenues available to them. Uh, they go out and get a grant or a bond they buy what they need. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, and this works most of the time. The cities are great at, at making sure that they um, 
spend the the money that they have um, wisely and, and and put it to the best use. But what happens when you go to procure something that's a bit complex, or you may not have the resources or expertise necessary to properly operate and maintain it? Now, as we consider another traditional way of procurement, and this is more on the energy side of things, we come to performance contracting. Now, let's go, let's consider what performance contracting is. It lets you go through your energy consuming assets, make them more efficient, and ultimately save you money on your energy bill. Now, in a, the benefit of performance contract, and, and this is a great story when you take it to city council, is these savings are guaranteed. These are guaranteed savings contracts that the city doesn't have to sign a deal. They won't lose money on it. If, if the, the performance of the facility or the, the contract doesn't play out like you thought, that provider will, will write you a check for the difference. Um, but one of the problems is, what if you don't want to go through all your energy uh consuming assets what if you just need the lights that's why we've seen as a service contracting come up it can still have some of the performance elements of a performance contract but it's not going to be all encompassing it's going to be more focused on a individual solution um, and need within that city and that brings us back to as a service contracting now we discussed how it removes the need for capital and o m but it also um allows the um, third party come in um, and bring that expertise to the table. But what if the city just wants to be responsible for the asset? They still want to have their people working on it. There's hybrids of this method that can still allow uh, for cities to operate some of their critical assets and still do as a service contract. And the beauty of it being a contract is there's some flexibility there. And while no contracting structure is perfect, every and every solution is different. Think of, of considering the unique needs you have for this solution and what contracting search may be best suited to meet that solution. So that's it for today. I want to thank you for your time listening to this brief module on uh, what as a service contracting is. I hope I've made it a little bit simpler um, because I know these things can be a bit confusing. You'll have some questions at the end uh, to answer as part of this. Uh, this is Smart City Academy, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to share some information with you today. Thank you for your time.